Would you like to be able to make a stepping stone like this for less than $5? I'm going to show you how to do it. It was probably 10 years ago. I had seen some of these. Um, ones that were bird baths, ones that were just stepping stones, and I just fell in love with them. I found it just so exciting. And I was at an art fair thing, and there was a booth with some ladies, and they had these. And I found one that was just fabulous. I mean, truly, it was beautiful. $125. Now, one, I'm never paying $125 for a piece of concrete. But it was something I really wanted. So I went on the search on how to make stepping stones, how to make bird baths. And I found through trial and error from different videos and different things I read that I pulled together the way I make them. Now, right up here is a link so that you can see the process of using concrete mortar mix to make the stepping stones. And today I'm gonna to take you through the process of painting them. I use a concrete sealer, a gloss, and I put that down after I've let the leaf cure for seven days, I put a sealer on, then I paint it with acrylic paint, then I put a sealer again. And I'm just gonna take you through the process. I did, I painted nine of them today, and at the end of the video, I have a little surprise for you. And white. So I have my acrylic paint. I have my paint brushes. A thing to remember always is to make sure your paintbrush has water particles. So I always dip it, um, either tap it off or dry it off a little bit, and then I go into the paint. Now because this is going to be purple and white, I want the veins on this rhubarb leaf to be purple. So I have a whole bunch of different size brushes and depending on the thickness of the vein, I will um, use different brushes. And then it's just a process of just laying down that paint into those veins. Now you don't have to do every single vein, of course you don't, just whatever ones you want. If you go off the edges, you can take a wet paper towel and just wipe where you went outside the lines. And I'm just going to take some time and I'm going to paint this, the veins in here and then I will be back. I thought I'd show you two ways that you can paint the veins. One, you use a very small brush and you're you're just painting every single vein that you want to show. But a lot of people don't want to do it that way and they might even not paint because of that. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I'm going to show you an easier way too. So of course I have my brush wet. And I'm actually going to just lightly get the surface wet. It will just help the acrylic paint flow down into the crevices. And then I'm just gonna take a lot of paint and I'm gonna push it right over top of everything. Now, of course it's going into every single vein. You may or may not want that, that's totally up to you. We're just gonna do this real quick on this half. And I got, of course, a center vein. And in the center vein, a lot of times you have to do two or three coats just because it's so wide. Now, because we let it have a little bit of water on the surface, it made it go down into the veins a little bit more than it would otherwise. Then I'm gonna just take a cloth and I'm gonna wipe it. and see how it filled all that in, which makes it a lot easier. But if you only want certain veins, you'll probably have to do it um, one brush stroke at a time. 
But as you can see, that's an easy, fast way. And when that dries, you'll be able to paint over top of it and that the, those veins will still show. And I'll show you how we do that in a little bit, but I will have to let those dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna do the other half. And we will let a few of them dry and we will start to paint them. If you're doing a lot of them, like I am doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them today, I want to be able to do the veins fast, easy. And so on this one, got that little bit of water laying down. And I like the veins to be very bold, be that black, blue, purple, um, red, a green. So this one I'm gonna make red. And I'm doing it the fast way. And this is a great leaf. This is actually a sunflower leaf. And so we're just spreading. Now is all acrylic paint equal? Uh, no. Do you have to have expensive acrylic paint to do one of these concrete rhubarb leaves? Of course not. I have found that the little tiny bottles, though they do work, a lot of times I have to do multiple coats of paint. And sometimes it's just easier to just get it like a tube paint, even if it's a student grade. And it seems to be a little thicker in texture and maybe a little more workable. And so after um, I get it down, if I don't think that it's dark enough, I'm just gonna let it dry a little bit and then I will do it another coat. Now, if when you're taking the color off, if it has changed the color somewhat of the concrete, do not worry because you're gonna paint on that anyway. And when it's dry, one of the nice things about acrylic is you make a mistake, you let it dry, you paint over it. When I used to teach art classes all the time, I would, the students would get so frustrated, I did it wrong. Well, one thing, art is never wrong. But if you think that you want it differently, you just simply let it dry and paint again. Now, because I'm doing nine of them, you know, where I would regularly just wipe this off. If you have a damp spoon, a sponge, it can be very effective. And you do have to rinse the sponge out repeatedly, but it, it's nice that it slides across the surface so well, but just make sure that when you rinse it out, that you really rinse a lot of the water out because you don't want them going down, the water going down into the veins now that you have color there and making it so um, it just wants to wash out. Now red is one of those pigments that really wants to adhere to the surface. And I'll take my towel and just wipe it more. Now as that dries, so can I have something right there? Um, as it dries, if I don't think it's dark enough, I will just let it dry completely and I'll put another coat. And let's go to the next one. So we're starting the purple and white one. And I just love purple and white. I like all the shades of purple. And you want a, a fairly wide brush. This one, this one, either of them would work. But you want it very dry. Unlike when 
we were doing the first part where we wanted water molecules around those bristles, we want this completely, this brush dry to help not have any of that top paint go into the, the veins. Now, if some go in the veins, do not worry. You just let it dry a little bit and you can take a tiny brush and fix it. So I like to work from the center outward, personal preference. Now, as I said, I like to work from the outward inside out, but I wanna show you a few things on this. This is really the edge of the leaf. And so a lot of times if it extends past that, I will take the center color and I will just throw some paint in there on, on that outside edges. Now, when you make your leaf, maybe you won't have any of that, but I wanna make a definition somewhat. I don't want it too stark. And as we go, you'll see what I mean. But when I start to actually paint inside the leaf, I always like to start in the center with my lightest colors. Now when this leaf dried, it was on a table that had a little dip in there. It's where the, where we can have a fire pit. And I didn't realize when I laid it on there that it was gonna catch that. But I find it very interesting, so I'm okay with that. So just quickly, I'm just gonna do one coat now you'll find, depending on your, your paint that you're using, it may need multiple coats of paint. It's not a problem. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out. I'm gonna start with the white here. Another thing you'll find that with the white, even though this is sealed, you will have to do multiple coats because you think it's bright enough and then it starts to dry and it's not. I just always figure that for sure I am going to have to do at least three or four coats of white. Now because this brush is so dry, I can just push things around and I'm just putting a little bit of paint on at a time. Because these are my main veins. Some of those little veins will get covered up if I wanted to go back and make definitions of every single one of those, I could. So I'm really keeping time with just that center vein with the white. So it's coming out from the center vein. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of purple into it and start to blend it out. So I add a little bit of white. I'm adding a little bit of purple. In fact, let me show you. So I'm adding a little white. I'm adding a little purple. There's not very much paint on my brush. And then I'm gonna to start to pull it. And as I keep going outward on my leaf, I'm going to get darker. So let's just do this section right here. Okay. Now I want it to get darker now. I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just adding some purple paint to it. And depending on how you would like that those colors to graduate out towards the edges, you can 
have it very subtle and it takes a long time before it changes or you can do it very fast that is just totally perfect personal preferences of how you want your leave to go not right not wrong it's just it's just fun that's all it is is fun but see how no matter if I just add purple onto my brush because there's some white in there it wants to blend well If it gets too dark in a spot, I can just put some white on my brush and blend it again. But see how it's beginning. Now I need it to be, have more white in the center. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off again. And I'm really, see I'm just taking my paint cloth and I'm just really pulling all that water that might be in between those bristles because I don't want water. I'm going to grab just white and I'm going to do the center again, right by those veins. Because it doesn't take long before the white isn't as bright as when we first put it on. And that's why you have to do multiple coats of white. Now I am going to finish this. I'm just gonna speed the video up so you can just watch as I go. But it's just a matter of blending and I am only using two colors. thought that was fun it's easy it's they're fun to make they're fun to do sorry I almost dropped my cordless mic and I am gonna give this concrete leaf away the stepping stone all you have to do on Friday August 21st 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time I'm gonna do a live 
And I hope you come along because I am giving away five different prizes. Why? Well, you know me, I love give, giving things away, but mostly because I wanted to thank all my subscribers. I reached 30,000 subscribers today. That is just blowing my mind. I just so appreciate everyone and I wanted to do some fun, special thing during a live that I could give away. So this rhubarb leaf is one of the five things I'm giving away. If you win this, you have to live in the United States. I'm not melon concrete out, out of the United States. It's way too heavy, too expensive. I'm not doing it. Sorry. But you could win one of the other prizes. As always, like, subscribe, share with the world. Truly, thank you so much. I hope you have a good day, and I hope you make some concrete stepping stones.